Good afternoon our viewers, welcome to your favorite show, The Legal List, that we always present by uh, that we always present from Optive and Limited and it comes to you every other two weeks on your favorite channel, the Optive and Limited Facebook page, the Optive and Limited Instagram page and the Optive and Limited Twitter account. Uh, your host is Ethel Kipoto, a practicing advocate and a member of the Optive and Limited team that brings you the best projects in the country and far and wide. Today, our panelists are ready to present to you a show that focuses on the title Adverse Possession. I do not know if you have come across adverse possession in any aspect of your land buying process, in any aspect of your land acquisition process, and even in any aspect out there, whether it's through the courts, whether it's through your neighbors, through your families, but adverse possession is a very critical title, a very critical topic that we tend to shred to you and make your understanding easier. As usual, I shall start by introducing my very able panel, and I shall start from my extreme rights, we have our advocate, Mr. Ian Washira. Hello, Next to him, we have our advocate, Ms. Josephine Bovi. And to my left, my immediate left, we have Ms. Nafula Masinde. And of course, today we have a guest, a face you have never seen before, a very handsome young man, a very focused young man, and is also part of the Optive and Limited team. His name is Miles Mulusa. Karibu Miles. Miles shall take you throughout the project, uh, one of the projects we have for this month, including our campaign for the month. So first, we shall start with our question, what is adverse possession? If you've ever heard about adverse possession, do you know what it means? Maybe Ms. Nafula can take us through the adverse possession topic. Thank you very much, Ethel. It's always a pleasure being on this show. So adverse possession is a method of land acquisition through hostile, open, continuous, an interrupted occupation. And it's usually for a certain period of time. In Kenya, this period is 12 years. So essentially what we are saying is that you, as a registered proprietor of land, can be denied of your, land, uh, of, of your right to property if another person enters and remains on your property for 12 uninterrupted years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, okay. So at least we have an idea of what adverse possession is all about. And maybe Ian can take us through what is the history of adverse possession and probably the conditions uh, that, that are required for one to claim adverse possession. And who and what is exactly adverse possession? She has given us a brief overview. Yes, yes. But how do you term adverse possession in terms of the history and the conditions thereof? Thank you. Thank you so much, Ito, mm -hmm. for this opportunity, and thank you for that wonderful question. Um, Nafula actually has described the process, even the, the principle behind adverse possession, quite rightly. And uh, if I can take you back to the Anglo-American period, when uh, we had laws now being developed, now we, have, uh, we had laws on uh, adverse possession uh, at that point. Of course, in Kenya, we had a very different kind of system considering that we had an American kind of, uh, uh, sorry, an African kind of uh, system of law. So the Anglo-American <coughs> process of adverse possession so that uh, land that is not being used, uh, land maybe has been used by ancestors of uh, that particular person, can be owned by the lineage of that particular person. So once uh, the colonialists came into Kenya, we adopted common law, which is basically anglo Anglo uh, law, English law. So common law was adopted into Kenya and that's how adverse possession comes into play in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So um, adverse possession is backed by law. Uh, it's provided for under the statute of limitations. We have the Limitations of Actions Act. Uh, it's an old act which has been in place for quite some time. And uh, there are certain provisions from section 17 to section 18, section 37 that provide for the process or the requirements for adverse possession. So I'll go into the first one, which is uh, the 12 year period. So for any party to claim adverse possession over the subject property, whichever property they're claiming over, they ought to have occupied that property for 12 years. And that is provided for under section 17, which prohibits uh, the registered proprietor from uh, making any claim in regard to that property. Mm -hmm. So that forms the basis of adverse possession. So secondly, uh, we have developed jurisprudence in Kenya. Our court systems have, have uh, developed jurisprudence 
which speak on the other requirements to prove adverse possession, and this has been done over many, many years. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other condition that has probably been brought about by uh, application by court <coughs> would be that uh, this occupation should be notorious. So over and above the 12-year period that you have occupied this property, you ought to have uh, occupied this property in a notorious way, in that everyone is aware that you are the occupier of that property. So probably you live there, you've set up probably your work, uh, warehouse there, you have your shop, <coughs> supermarket, whichever kind of occupation. Mm -hmm. So if you do this in secrecy, if you occupy this property for 12, even 50 years in secrecy, then it doesn't qualify you to be getting that uh, kind of uh, order from court. Mm -hmm. So that's the second condition. Uh, the third condition, you ought to have occupied this property peacefully. So if you came, uh, if you came into this property probably fighting the owner at, at, at the, you know, at, at the disadvantage of the owner mm -hmm. in an aggressive manner, mm -hmm. then the courts will not listen to you because at the end of the day, equity uh, works for those who have clean hands. Mm -hmm. So it aids those who have clean hands. So he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. Then another condition is that uh, this occupation not ought, should be in an unpermissive way. So if you have permission from the registered proprietor probably to be occupying this property as a caretaker, probably occupying this property uh, just as a tenant, then after 12 years you cannot go to court as a way of defending yourself from any claim of a, of a, of a trespass. Mm -hmm claiming that uh, you have adverse claim, you have an adverse claim over the property. Courts will now look at the context, the situation, or the way in which you came into possession of that property. Okay. So finally, uh, this, uh, this kind of occupation should be apparent to everyone. I think we had uh, already addressed that uh, it should be very uh, apparent to everyone, such that uh, even if you're bringing witnesses to court, they are able to attest to that occupation. So those are the conditions, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a brief description of how adverse possession came into in the Kenyan context. Awesome, awesome. Yes. While he was doing um, a brief uh, uh, illustration on this adverse possession, yes. he mentioned trespass. Um, I don't know if Ms. Nafula can t give us the difference between trespassing and uh, adverse possession. Um, well, those two terms are actually related, but just to define trespass, trespass is the illegal invasion of another person's property. So adverse possession is essentially trespass that has been made legal by the passage of time. That is the statutory period of 12 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that means if I come and occupy someone's land without... Uh, of course, forceful means yes. where I, I know the owner and, and, and we have fought about it. But I just move in swiftly, I stay there for like eight years and then the owner comes and says that so oh, Italy is occupying my property. Mm -hmm. So that does that uh, accumulate to adverse possession or is it still trespass? Well, that's still going to be trespass because we've clearly stated that for adverse possession claims to be successful, there has to be an interrupted occupation of that property for 12 years or more. Okay, okay. Maybe to um, bring our viewers up to speed, we have seen severally in the news um, around Kenya that we have uh, set people who settled in uh, slum dwelling areas, for example, Mukuru Kwanjenga, where they have been in running battles with the government because they have been asked to move out of those areas like Mukuru Panjenga, they have been asked to move out of the slum areas. And of course, when they come to the TV, they say, Serikali's idea, we have nowhere else to go. Uh, my grandmother used to live here. My father used to live here. I live here. I brought up my children here. And then now, eventually, the government is asking me to move out. So, I mean, uh, what is the process that they need to follow in court for them to either get this property or the person who's claiming that this property is theirs, which is now essentially the government. Do you have like a process where they can follow Ms. Josephine? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that question. So um, if you want to put a claim or put, you know, enforce this adverse, your claim in adverse possession, you're supposed to go to court using a document called an originating summons. So you're supposed to take this document uh, uh, to the f and file it at the relevant, you know, uh, court where the land is, is 
located. So let's say if the land is located in Mukuru uh, Kwanjenga, Kwanjenga mm -hmm. uh, you will now put it in the High Court mm -hmm. at Nairobi. Nairobi. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, okay. And um, since we have many of these cases, you can imagine you buy property from Optiman and you probably are a client living in the diaspora and you buy maybe probably a money read from us. And then, of course, we have finished the transaction, but you are not ready to do any development on that particular property, and you live maybe in the U.S. or even in Kenya. So what are the measures you would encourage like our buyers, our viewers out there to take in order to stop the adverse position occurring? Right. So maybe you can put up a fence or, you know, just something to enclose the area from unauthorized access. Mm -hmm. You can also have a signage, you know, we've seen these signages everywhere. The ones that are written, this plot is not for sale or no trespassing, those type of signs. Uh, you can also, you know, uh, go and visit, or rather, you, you know, you can even tell your brother or your relative or your neighbor, uh, someone you know, your friend, to go and look at the property regularly to make sure that there's no unauthorized person, you know, sitting on that property. Also, um, let's say if uh, in the event that there's someone who's staying there, it's important for you to have a written agreement with that person. This can either be through a tenancy agreement or a lease agreement. Yeah, so that's about it. Oh, okay. And maybe to let our viewers know that when you buy property with Optiven, we guarantee that we shall take care of the beacons on the property for a period of 12 months from the date of purchase. And that means if we are taking care of your beacons, and that means we are also looking into your property. But after that period has lapsed, dear buyer, dear viewer, we encourage you to send your relatives to come and fence that property for you if you're in the diaspora. And if you're local, please make frequent visits to your property. I know we take them as a joke when we say nimeenda kuangalia shamba yangu mahali nione vile inaendelea but that is exactly what you need to do because you will stay there you know the shamba is there but by the time you're going there there's already a full family that is dwelling in your property and then you start uh, embracing running battles or going to court and you do not know what to do with those people then another question since you mentioned um the mukuru kwanjenga slums and uh, what they're going through and of course, that property belongs to the government initially, you know, so it's not a private investor. But uh, now the question here is, what happens if you are claiming adverse possession of a property that belongs to the government and not a private person? Or again, uh, can the government come and claim adverse possession on your property that they have built their facilities there without consulting you? It has been 12 years and now they want to claim that property. Ms. Nafula, maybe you could shed some light on that. That's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. So the answer is no. Adverse possession is a principle that applies between an individual and, a, and, and, and another individual. Mm -hmm. It cannot apply between an individual and the government or vice versa. And maybe just to expand on this principle, um, recently we had a case, a 2022 case that was between Matisi Self Help Group and the Ministry of Interior and Coordination, of course, uh, with the Attorney General being the representative of the government. So in this situation, Matisi Self Help Group had purchased property around the year 2000. But in 2007, 2008, when we had the post-election violence, they were forced to move out of their homes and they were also forced to leave this suit property vacant. Mm -hmm. So the government, in a bid to curb the post-election violence, established a police post on their property. Mm -hmm. So Matisse's self-help group um, approached the court and was like, this, the government is invading on our property. We have a right under Article 40 of the Constitution and other supporting statutes. Uh, and we are also the registered owners of this property. So interestingly, the Ministry of Interior and Coordination was not, um, they did not disagree to the fact that this group was the registered owner of the property, but they argued that since this police post had been on this property for over 12 years, they were entitled to this property. But Justice Nyagaka was very harsh on the government and used very harsh terms and stated that the government is the ultimate owner of the property in Kenya. We all mm -hmm. know that the government holds property in trust for the people of Kenya and that it needs to be very careful not to take what it has given. given out. That yes. if the government wishes to take a private individual's property, there are very uh, well outlined procedures on how they can uh, acquire this property. We all know uh, that the only way the government can occupy 
pro, uh, can uh, take a private individual's property is through compulsory acquisition, which leads to compensation of this individual in the long run. And so the same also applies to private individuals. You cannot go, you cannot move into government property. Then 12 years later, you want to run to court and say, "I've been on this property for more than 12 years," because then uh, you're also infringing on the right of other Kenyans. Remember, the government holds property in trust for all the people of Kenya. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, in your explanation about the Matisse Self Help Group, you have mentioned Article 40. I would like to put myself in the shoes of the viewer. What does Article 40 say in relation to the adverse possession? Well, Article 40 of the Constitution basically guarantees every Kenyan a right to own property in any place in Kenya. So, of course, you know, certain people will come and argue that adverse possession is an infringement on my right as a registered owner because we also know that various land laws guarantee that once you have title to the property, you are the ultimate owner of that property. But then we also know that uh, all the rights in the constitution have limitations. And unfortunately, the right to land under this article 40 of the constitution has limitations and one of them is this, uh, what we are talking about today, advanced possession. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Dear viewer, we have had a chance to discuss about adverse possession. We have the same uh, article posted in our website www.optiven.co.ke for your further reading and further consultation. But just in case you need to get in touch with us if you have any more questions or you need more information, kindly free to uh, kindly feel free to write an email to us via legal at optiven.co. Ke. And it is that time, dear viewer, we need to introduce you to our new campaign for the month of November. It is at this juncture that I hand you over to my colleague, Miles Mulusa, to take us through the campaign and our project for the month. Thank you very much, Miles. Thank you, Ethel, for this opportunity. Our new campaign for the month of November is Pata Ploti, Chap Chap, Na Optiva. Yep. The team will help me put some, some lather in that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. We are going to do pata ploti chop 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 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So our new month campaign for November is pata ploti chop chop, chop, chop na optiven. Yes, this campaign is whereby when you deposit 149k on any of our projects, you get a 3k cashback on your deposit. So we encourage you to invest with us. For more information, you can reach us on 0790300. 300. Our property of focus this week is the Great Oasis Nanyuki. Uh, this is a property where we say bigger is better. We have land from as, uh, from as low as an eighth acre, a quarter acres, a half acres, one acre, five acres, ten acres. So we have no limit in Nanyuki. And you know Nanyuki is the land where tourism is growing at a high rate. It's near the equator. The climate is good. So please reach out and invest with us in Nanyuki from as low as 379000 and you can get your title and every legal document processed at Optiven. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Miles. Um, just to add on that, Nanyuki project is quite on sale. It is quite a hot property. And you know, there's something I had, dear team members, that when you invest in property that is along the equator, you live to be a happy person. There's some mood that goes around the equator, you know. It is a warm place. We do not have diseases. We do not have malaria around the equator. And I think it is a very good project. You can imagine waking up in the morning to just see Mount Kenya on one side, and on the other side, you are seeing the the Loldaiga Hills, and on the other side you are seeing Abadea Ranges, and when you go to the malls you meet with our Muzungus, and you tend to ask yourself, am I in Spain or am I still in Kenya, you know? So I think the Nanyuki project is a very good project, bigger is better, and we are encouraging all of you to make, uh, to make a booking with us, to go and visit the property, and we take our bookings for Saturday. There's a small cost that is added unto it, but you can get in touch with you once you call us on 0790-300-300. We look forward to you having you invest with us, and we love you so much. Have a blessed day and a great week. It is from us. We say bye-bye.